Brighton is a new play by the acclaimed playwright Jim Nolan, which opened at Garter Lane in Waterford. Writer and reviewer John McKenna went there last night, and he joins us now to tell us about it. Uh, firstly, Jim Nolan is a favourite son of Waterford. Yeah, I mean, a huge, long uh, and very, very successful connection with Red Kettle and at Garter Lane. He was the ex-artistic director, wasn't he? And uh, Yeah, absolutely, that's right, he was, yeah. I mean, he's directed, I think, over 20 plays in, in Garter Lane for Red Kettle. His own plays, The Guernica Hotel, The Salvage Shop, Blackwater Angel Sky Road, all have been through. So not surprising that he's a favourite son. And uh, having a play uh, premiere in there is a big event for Waterford, I'm sure. Um, yeah, um, and 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 it's a well, it's a superb, it's a beautiful, beautiful play. I mean, last night there was a full house, and I assume there was on Saturday night, and I hope there will be. Uh, th- that raises an interesting question because I'm I'm really hoping. I was going to say this later, but probably as good a time as any to say it now. I'm really hoping this play goes on the road. I mean, it absolutely deserves to. I just thought it was a stunningly beautiful play, and if mm. it doesn't come to Dublin, if it doesn't tour the country, if it doesn't find a home in some theatre in Britain, then there's absolutely no justice. Well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm sensing that you liked it. Oh, I absolutely <laughs> loved it. Yeah. Maybe Indeed, you could give yeah. us a, a lowdown on the, on the characters. Three characters. And three characters mm-hmm. uh, th- three, there are six people on stage, actually. Three of the stage hands work as nurses in a hospital, and, and that leads to quick set changes. But there are three main characters. There's Lily, who's this Irish woman who um, has been working in Britain for most of her life. She's 75 years of age. According to herself, she worked in the bowels of the Inland Revenue for 44 <laughs> years. She's now a resident in this nursing home in Hammersmith, the uh, Sisters of Charity Nursing Home in Hammersmith Road in London. And she's a big Fulham soccer club fan. Second character is Dave, who's a nursing aide in the nursing home. He's very brash, he's very bright, he's gay, he's in a very complicated but committed relationship with an unreliable character who's known as the Maltese Falcon. And he's a huge, manic Arsenal fan, so that in itself... I I see tension already building. Already building there. And then there's Jack, who is a very well-respected actor, both on stage and on screen, who arrives at the nursing home. He's had a freak accident on an escalator. It's left him paralysed from the waist down. And I suppose more importantly, really, and this is central to the play, it's left him emotionally paralysed as well. Mm. And so, uh, you know, this, this is, wouldn't be normal territory for a Jim Nolan play, do you think? I mean, it's not no, set in Ireland, not, for it's instance. it's not set in Ireland. It's set in Hammersmith. Uh, I mean, uh, Lily is, is an Irish woman. Dave, the, the nursing assistant, has an Irish father from Connemara. Beautiful line in that, because Dave talks about his being gay and, and coming out at 16 and that the one who was really supportive of him was his father who was this navvy from Connemara and he had never expected this and his mm. mother who was uh, an English woman had, had, had never really come to terms with this. So no, it's, it's not really that expected territory really and that's one of the things I really liked about it because the storyline, it, it, it just really follows the relationship between the three characters over a couple of months. Lily is this really outgoing warm, bright woman. She's in the nursing home, she's writing her autobiography. As she says herself, she's only at 1954 and she's on page 300. <laughs> uh, she's also trying desperately to get the patients together to form a choir for the Christmas Mass. She takes a walk every day down to the local tube station because that's her kind of foray out in, into, the, into the, the life that goes on outside. Uh, Dave, on the other hand, is trying to hold uh, onto and, and to cajole this, this uh, Maltese falcon into marriage. And then into the middle of this established relationship arrives Jack who is obviously trying to come to terms with this paralysis which he's just spent 18 months in Stoke Mandeville and hated it and now he's here temporarily he says while his flat is being prepared for him we find out that that he has a a partner Alison who's 18 years younger than him who wants to bring him home who wants to nurse him but he's holding out against that because he does not want to be nursed he has decided in fact that he wants to go to Switzerland for an assisted suicide mm-hmm. and there's some very one of the most beautifully gentle lines in it is, is a conversation between uh, Lily and, and Jack about this where Lily doesn't condemn the notion of assisted suicide all she says to him is Switzerland is a horrible country <laughs> <laughs> that's you, all she says so and that's I suppose kind of gentle a, humor running through it with a very simple story outline like you've given us it's three possible misfits together yep. and thing you're therefore depending on the skill of the playwright and you're depending on his ability to, to coin beautiful language, I suppose, and theatrical and I mean, language. And he does, because, I mean, to me, I suppose, I was thinking about this last night. I was driving back up from Waterford. To me, it's this play is really, it's like a poem on stage. There is not one word. There is not one line that's out of place. And it's, it's a story which might have strayed into sentimentality, never does. I mean, the writing is absolutely beautiful. The, the acting is Oh, it's just, it is superb, and the Maybe direction we'll, we'll, is superb. We'll take, a, we'll take an excerpt from this. Sure. This is an excerpt. I think we have Mark Lambert and Gillian Halna, I think, is involved. 
I gather you've been briefed on Jack's day out. I'm sure she's long overdue. I met Freddy, your Lothari of Ladbrokes. How is he? Inconsolable in your absence. Cried into his gin all evening. And I should warn you, he's planning a visit. That's okay. He intends to propose to you. That's not okay. Though I should think he'll have come to his senses by now. Oh, far from it. I had the hair of the dog with him this morning. First thing he asked for was the name of the hospital. No doubt you obliged. Love's old sweet song, Lily. How could I refuse? I don't even know his second name. Venables. What? Freddy Venables. I needed his name for the list. What list? The Calvary House Christmas Choir list. List. I've recruited him. Sacred heart of Jesus, is he moving in? Honorary membership. Unless, of course, you do marry him, in which case I'll ask Matron to organise a double room. You'll do no such thing. There we had Gillian Hanna and Mark Lambert. Um, in uh, this, this, this play has also got a strong team behind it. Uh, I'm it guessing. Absolutely. I mean, there there are some superb. There, there are a couple of moments in. I mean, the acting is superb. Uh, Gillian Hanna absolutely blew me away. I mean, as did and the she's other not an directors. actress that I know. Um, no, I had never seen her before. Uh, or at least, sorry, if I had seen her, I wasn't aware that I'd seen her. I thought she was. She's she has a stunningly beautiful presence on stage, as do the other two actors. But she, she really stole it for me. Uh, but the superb ensemble playing as well, and the direction. There are just some beautiful moments. And there's a moment uh, where Dave t tells Jack something about Lily, about her, her state of health, and there's a moment where Jack is about to switch channels on the TV because he's a big racing fan, and, and he, he stops. And it's a moment that the whole play might turn on. There's another beautiful moment later on where the nurses are stripping a bed. We don't know for about 30, 40, 50 seconds why they're stripping this bed. And, and the moment is left poignantly hanging there. But the level of acting is, is the level of direction by... by um, by Ben Barnes, ben is Barnes. absolutely beautiful. Just he has a track record, on. hasn't he? With uh, he does, with yes, he does, he does. You know, he, does. Like he has directed he does. his, uh, the and they just work so 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 blindly as a pair, and everything worked last night. One thing that went wrong. What is it about audiences that they do not understand? Please turn off your phone. There was a moment last night, a really poignant moment, where a phone rang twice in the audience. Couldn't but believe it. I think but that didn't spoil a, the There play. is a case for cattle prods being given there is. to a theatre there, there there Well, I think the when the the looks from what some of the actors last night, if they'd had a cattle prod, they'd have been out into the audience with and it. What this, don't miss this play. Please don't miss it if you have to travel to Waterford. But I really, really hope that the play travels. It must travel. It's a beautiful play. And design-wise, it's designed by Joe Did Van you, Eck? You, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, just the, the, the set worked wonderfully because we're talking about a Hammersmith nursing home. We're talking about Brighton. Brighton, there's a hospital in Brighton which becomes very central because mm. there's a day trip to Brighton and something happens on that. I won't spoil it for you. But just the set is beautiful. The lighting is beautiful. It's a beautiful play. Don't miss it. Okay. Big thumbs up there from Tom again. Thank you up. very much.